rail-based public transport in the form of trolley buses as well as light rails were used in the early 1900s but were later abolished. However, stage buses, trains, ferry and other systems have continued to dominate the public transport system in Penang. The Penang state government has, over the years, been formulating transportation strategies. However, public transport in Penang has become a serious problem which needs to be addressed immediately. For this reason, a team from University Science Malaysia has been commissioned to undertake a study on the feasibility of a high-quality public transport system for Penang. The number of vehicles registered in Penang has continued to rise. This steady growth is recorded to be one of the highest in Malaysia. In order to reduce transport problems and to accommodate the population growth, decentralization of Penang's urban structure has been postulated. New patterns of development and hierarchy of towns are the result of a decentralization policy. The rationale behind decentralization is to disperse urban activities, to locate jobs nearer homes, and at the same time to increase accessibility. This, together with changing social values, which reflect better employment and income opportunities, call for greater mobility. A survey carried out by the study team showed that about 60% of the respondents who travelled by bus are not private transport owners. Among those who did possess private transport indicated, however, that they chose to travel by bus because it was cheaper and they can avoid the traffic congestion and parking problems. However, public transport in Penang continues to deteriorate. Public transport is very difficult to get, get a bus, you see. I've waited here for so long, half an hour, still no bus. Just now I went there, Batu Lanchang Lane, to wait for mini bus. There was no mini bus at all. The problems of bus delay, unreliability and unattractive service are common. Studies have shown Buses failed to comply with the fixed timetables or schedules because of the following reasons. Indiscipline amongst the drivers and conductors, duplication of routes, shortage of buses on certain routes, unreliable bus service and road congestion. A study in Georgetown and Butterworth has also highlighted the problems of coordination between multiple bus undertakings to provide satisfactory services. On the whole, the level of satisfaction towards public transport services is also of great concern. The major reasons for the decline in public transport usage are longer bus travelling time due to traffic congestion, buses are overloaded during peak hours, poor public transport infrastructure, lack of publicity and marketing, and long waiting times for buses and longer walking distances to bus stops. However, some major stage bus routes are really lucrative. Regarding bus terminals, the following problems have been noted. Inadequate waiting space, narrow, dark and unfriendly environment, lack of information on time schedule, bus routes and bus fares, and lack of passenger amenities. Regarding the provision of bus stops, the issues are lack of bus stop signs, lack of information on time schedules, bus routes and bus fares, poor lighting, lack of bus bays and seats, lack of shelter and other facilities for waiting, an insufficient number of bus stops at strategic places, hence longer distance and time for passengers to walk to stops. 
The introduction of mini buses, inspired by the need to improve public transport, has not been effective to eliminate public transport problems. The absence of statutory requirement and guidelines have seriously aggravated the present problems. Hence, more stringent policies are required. Several taxi drivers interviewed have indicated that even though they have worked for many years, they still fail to obtain taxi permits. As a result, they are forced to hire their vehicles at fairly high prices. This is a problem because taxi drivers are generally not high income earners. For example, there is no coordination between the taxi services and the bus services. Uh, there is no coordination among them, among also among the bus services themselves. For example, there are um, duplications of uh, routes between the bus transport, the various uh, transport companies. Uh, as a result, um, many of them complain that, that they have uh, been losing money uh, as a result of operating these uh, buses. In other words, uh, there is a very unhealthy, unhealthy competition among the various uh, bus operators and among the various taxi operators. Duplication of bus routes along some roads has generally created unnecessary competition and uneconomic form of operation. So what we need for taxi service is a coordinated uh, system. It's either a metered, totally metered system or totally unmetered system. The system so-called Kreta Sewa. Uh, the majority of the uh, taxi operators, they want to change uh, the whole system into a Kreta Sewa system, whereby they are allowed to uh, charge the passengers according to area pricing, um, yeah, where the passengers are able to share uh, one taxi, maximum of four passengers sharing one taxi, and therefore uh, cutting down on, on the cost for individual transport and at the same time uh, giving extra income to the taxi driver. The presence of pirate taxis, commonly known as Kreta Sapu in Penang, further contributes to the already problematic situation. For short distance travel within the city, the trishaw is a practical alternative. However, with the dispersal of development and the growing size of the metropolitan areas, trishaws are no longer feasible and taxis are expected to play a more important role. One of the problems faced by trishaw operators is competition from the taxis and minibuses, which certainly affects their livelihood. Therefore, any changes in policy which affect the trishawmen should take their economic future into consideration. School buses have been recognized as an important mode of travel to and from school. Since school bus operators provide services from door to door and furthermore take their passengers to schools located in different directions, their demand to raise the bus fare is reasonable. Safety is another concern that needs attention. Factory buses provide direct, almost door to door service to the workers. As long as the passengers are from different factories, separate buses or separate bus trips are required, irrespective of the number of passengers. Due to the shortage of places for picking up and dropping off passengers, the situation has further contributed to the traffic problem. As a result of the imminent collection system, no conductor is required and thus reduces the operating cost. Obviously, there is a lack of participation in comprehensive planning, licensing and implementation of public transport in Penang. The shortage of manpower in the field of transportation 
in dealing with planning, licensing and control has further aggravated the present situation. However, there is an increasing awareness that an effective transportation system is needed to provide maximum accessibility and mobility. Five strategies have been formulated to handle the public transport system in Penang. Improvement to the public transport system, greater integration between public transport planning and urban development, a better traffic management system for public transport, effective organizational strategies, and a new mode of public transport. The public transport improvements which need to be addressed immediately are in the form of various strategies. Making stops and stations attractive, making terminals attractive, improving information system, and using better quality buses. Incorporating public transport considerations such as stops in the early stages of the planning process is very important in view of the new development. Planning of a public transport system in newly developed or planned areas must provide greater accessibility, especially in high density areas with low car ownership. This would help achieve an efficient public transport system. At present, the emphasis is to combat the declining model split ratio for public transport. Restraining traffic in the city centre in the form of pedestrianisation, pedestrianisation with bus priority, and stringent parking policies are some ways to restrict the use of private vehicles while enhancing the use of public transport. However, this policy should not affect the residents in this area. Another solution is to increase passengers' accessibility to public transport, as well as enhancing the shopping environment for pedestrians. The restructuring of the organization is more urgent, as it is the root cause with the present mechanism. There is no single authority in the state that manages the whole uh, transportation system. The need to restructure the present organization necessitates the formation of the Penang Transportation Authority, which will be entrusted to look into the overall public transport system in terms of its planning and coordination. This authority must ensure a transport impact analysis is carried out as well as coordinating an integrated scheduling system, ticketing and devising an effective information system. The authority needs to be supported by professionally qualified staff in the field of transport, who in turn will help to generate an overall public transport plan for the entire state. We support the state government policy to amalgamate all stage bus companies into one or two consortiums because we feel that we can give a better service to the public. For effective planning and control, an amalgamation of all stage bus companies into two major companies is recommended. One will be operating on the island while the other on Province Wellesley. It is anticipated that much of the problems pertaining to uneconomic use of labour, duplication of routes, uncoordinated ticketing, improper scheduling, information system and unhealthy practices could be substantially reduced. Amalgamation of factory and school buses into few major companies would also help to minimize the present problems. Amalgamation of bus companies is possible with the formation of the Transport Authority which will be entrusted to look into planning, control and the implementation of a public transport system in Penang. It is anticipated that from the year 2000 onwards, rapid urban development will take place and the population structure will change significantly in Penang. Most of the present road network 
will not be able to accommodate expected increase in traffic flow. A modern, faster and more comfortable public transport system needs to be introduced in Penang. For this reason, the LRT, planned along developed corridors linking outlying areas within the city of Georgetown, is recommended and this should complement the existing public transport network. In fact, buses and taxis will serve as a feeder service to the LRT. In ensuring effective planning, greater participation from the state government is required. In fact, more employment opportunities could be generated for the local people once the LRT system is planned and implemented. However, the feasibility of introducing the LRT needs to be studied in greater detail. One obvious problem is the absence of statutory requirements and guidelines for planning, design and control for the implementation of a public transport system. In fact, a reorganization of the present machinery is really vital. A more comprehensive transportation plan should be formulated instead of implementing ad hoc solutions. In addition, the Transport Act 1987 should be reviewed, taking into account research and policy, planning, guidelines, licensing and implementation, giving greater authority to the state government. Besides being comprehensive, the management of public transport in Penang has to be well coordinated. The choice of these strategies, however, depends very much on the political will and the economic social acceptability of such policies.